गुड इवनिंग एंड नमस्ते एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर कृष्ण प्रसाद एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एंड आर एम ओ जे एस एस आयुर्वेदा मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड हॉस्पिटल एट टाइम्स वेन वी आर हियरिंग अबाउट कोविड नाइन्टीन कोविड नाइन्टीन एंड ओनली कोविड नाइन्टीन एंड द पैनिक दैट इट हैज क्रिएटेड ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड एट दिस ब्लीकनेस सिचुएशन वी नीड रिलेंटलेस एफर्ट्स टू एक्विप अवर सेल्स with a very strong mind and body today we have with us dr aparna surendra who is a senior consultant in the department of yoga and naturopathy at jss ayurveda hospital she has a vast clinical experience of 25 years madam i welcome you to this facebook live presentation thanks sir you being an expert in the field of yoga and naturopathy what would you think will be of help to face this situation of covid-19 namaste to all first of all i render my humble pranamas to the lotus feet of shri 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 jagadguru deshikendra mahaswami ji presently the whole universe is struggling against covid-19 so we all are sailing in the same boat a huge turmoil is there in our lives since past 3 months irrespective of caste creed region religion age and status lord krishna says parivartana is jagat niyama that is changing is the style of the universe we have to adapt to it we have to accept to it but this change due to covid 19 is really challenging and highly unpredictable but our indians Uh, tradition and strong culture and also the indian systems of medicine these sciences gives us a lost law uh, strong support in order to fight against this covid 19 for example indian systems of medicines like yoga ayurveda naturopathy we have many preventive measures which can definitely help a person to come out from this panic situations yoga in yoga discipline for example we have pranayama asana and kriyas and such some disciplines are there which will help us to fight against covid 19 uh, man uh, you mentioned about uh, pranayamas yes uh, can you brief our viewers on how to practice uh, pranayama and how it helps in this uh, situation yeah. sir this pranayama means breath control so according to hatha yoga pradipika a classical text it says when our mind wanders our breath also wanders when we control our breath we can definitely control our mind to so, to say to have a sound mind in a sound body we all need to practice this pranayama so pranayama takes hardly 20 to 30 minutes per day so here few pranayama practices like nadi shuddhi ujjayi kapala bhati are very helpful to detoxify your body and to improve your immune immune system so here but keeping in point of covid 19 infection because these kapala bhati one among this pranayama is kapala bhati i told it is a vigorous practice breathing practice so there are chances of falling of air droplets around us the person who is practicing so in order to avoid the spread of infection when a person uh, chooses doing pranayama he should be isolated he should do it in a room rather than doing in a mass or group so we have to suggest all our viewers if they are practicing pranayama select a separate room practice for 10 to 20 minutes and then come out from that room but do not go to a mass or group for the practice of pranayama in the same way we have some asanas also to Im- improve the immunity of our respiratory systems okay. uh, ma'am you also mentioned about asanas yes uh, which particular asanas will help at this juncture so at outset first i should uh, t- uh, tell surya namaskara is a very important one so sun salutation it is called in english but it should be done in the morning sun rising hours not inside the house going outside uh, outside your house exposing your body to the mild and tender sun rays definitely will help to improve your immunity sun sun salutation can be done maybe 6 to 10 rounds depending upon the strength of each and every person 
and we can select few asanas like pavana muktasana and sarvangasana and kurmasana the first two pavana muktasana and sarvangasana they enhance the venous and lymphatic drainage and detoxify our body and when we do this detoxification body becomes so pure that the virus will fail to thrive in our body tissues and coming to the last asana that is kurmasana it is a tortoise pose which can be done easily as the name itself says you may just imagine the tortoise whenever there is external stimulus from the enemy tortoise draws its legs hands and head inside its shell so it gets a protection from its shell so in the same way when we, we are doing some fighting when we are facing some panic situation to protect our body and to protect our mind to have a sound mind in our sound body we need to practice this kurmasana and we can attain mental poise by doing this so definitely these asanas will also help us to fight against covid 19 and another third procedure in yoga is dhyana or meditation meditation is focusing on a single thought it, it can be also called as contemplation in sanskrit we say just like a taila dhara when oil is poured from one vessel to the other there will not be break so here you need to select one deity ishta devata the god whomever you like or else you can contemplate on pranava that is omkara omkara is not religious it is like omkara is the the universe started with the big bang that is the sacred sound omkara even our body cells also they vibrate with the same magnetic resonance hence contemplating on omkara or a god whomever you like the most or just you can focus on your own breathing so sit for 10 minutes to 20 minutes daily and you can even go for prayers before you start meditation the importance of meditation and pranayam uh, sorry dhyana and uh, this prayer was told by shri shankara acharya he was the founder of advaita philosophy he says like this so in childhood human beings are very interested in playing games and when they come to the teenage they are interested in making love with others and when you step up into adolescence you are bothered about earning your livelihood and making money and when you come to the old age you are bothered about your disease and death so most of us do not realize the importance of uh, chanting prayers doing meditation so that's how when you do meditation you can introspect and you can unravel the hidden potentialities you can face any type of panic situation with the help of your strong soul which is spiritually immersed uh, ma'am can you throw more light on the uh, naturopathy and how it helps in the prevention of covid-19 so in naturopathy we have very simple home remedies which can be followed by each and every one so you can do hot and salt water gargling and you can also do steam inhalation with the mint leaves and you can take some teas with herbal preparations like lemon and ginger tea and you can also pre- prepare uh, pepper tulsi and turmeric tea for this herbal teas or decoctions better to add honey or organic jaggery than sugar because sugar content always enhances infection so better to go for herbal tea with jaggery organic jaggery or honey and also we have some yogic kriyas which is practiced in naturopathy so jalaneti it is the nasal irrigation it should be guided by a naturopathy physician or yoga therapist so within one day one can learn this yogic kriya so when jalaneti is done it gives your upper respiratory tract in uh, very immunity and it washes away all the toxins and debris from the upper respiratory tract also we have in naturopathy high fiber diet prescription so whenever the fiber increases in our diet it alleviates constipation sarve roga malavasha so detoxifying the body definitely boosts your immune system so naturopathy means it is a system of ancient medicine previously it was branch of ayurveda now it has developed on its own as an individual science a sanskrit shloka says sharira madhyamam khalu dharma sadhanam body is a best tool to attain all goals of life keep it healthy by yoga ayurveda and prakriti chikitsa prakriti chikitsa as the name itself says 
it is the tri- treatment given with natural resources Mahash- mahatma gandhi ji was the founder and initiator of naturopathy in india so it it has holistic approach it certainly concentrates on five dimensions of health like physical moral mental spiritual and social health it is a very safe and drugless therapy here we use only pancha mahabhutas natural resources as a treatment modality and also for the promotion of health uh, ma'am uh, how uh, naturopathy makes use of this pancha mahabhutas as treatment modalities so in naturopathy we use pancha mahabhutas i told you so pancha mahabhutas are earth water air fire and space so keeping the earth as a element in mind we start we use mud therapy for treating the patients or persons in mud therapy we collect the mud beneath one one feet beneath the ground it it is very purified pure mud we should not collect it from contaminated places then it should be processed under the sun dried under the sun then it is used and water element gives you hydrotherapy treatments it are we specially designed cups are there to suit different parts of the body and under element air we have pranayamas and massage therapy and under element fire we have sun bath diet and nutrition and we have space element inside our human body so where fasting therapy is advised oh, okay ma'am you mentioned about fasting okay uh, people will have questions about uh, fasting and whether uh, it is uh, is it not about eating food or uh, eating less food or and how frequently uh, one can go for fasting and how much uh, safe is fasting so what do you say about this ma'am okay so fasting is not totally abandoning the food fasting means upavasa stay near to the god so leave all the materialistic world worries of making cooking and then eating etc so but you have to switch on you have to uh, additionally you can switch on to the juice diet fruits raw vegetables some natural food do you can select but you have to avoid solid food than cooked food in fasting so people always confuse this fasting to avoiding rice and taking some pulkas or taking some pohas etc but fasting is done with the liquid diet so liquids can be like fruit juices or soups or butter milk anything you can even add fruits and raw vegetables and when you select this juice diet it is basically it is a low calorie diet so eating less and keep uh, giving less load on your git definitely it will give the body's energy to repair the tissues so here taking low calorie is the concept in fasting so there will be eating less and having more energy inside your body and we can treat even obesity with the help of juice diet because in juice diet there is low calories are taken into okay ma'am uh, it means which means eating less calories helps in obesity or losing weight yes uh, ma'am how to balance this uh, calories and weight okay basically obesity is a disease when energy expenditure becomes less than the energy consumption to say in simple words you eat more and work out very less okay. that's why we are given with one hand to eat and two hands to work and one mouth to eat and two legs to walk so that's why it says it gives you a message that you always you should work out more and eat less there are two types of obesity majorly generalized obesity and abdominal obesity in generalized obesity the fat is accumulated all over the body whereas in abdomen obesity more fat is accumulated in the abdomen hips and pelvic region we can evaluate the uh, or diagnose the obesity with the help of body mass index so by evaluating weight and height so here in obesity when the B, we get bmi more than 25 it is it is not considered as obesity and if it is from 25 to 30 it is considered as overweight he is not obese if the bmi falls to 30 to 40 then only a person is called as obesity and if the bmi goes beyond 40 it is considered as morbid obesity here is a amazing fact for you all that it says like this uh, 50 to 200 kilo calorie taken for 4 to 10 years in middle age so remember 50 to 200 kilo calories means just just 
fist of rice, two handful of rice or two cups of coffee taken over a period of 4 to 10 years may increase 5 to 20 kilos of body weight in 10 years. So this is quite alarming. So we need to definitely uh, eat less when we look into this fact. More longer the length of the abdominal belt, the lesser will be the lifespan. So when, why we need to treat obesity? If you don't treat obesity, or if you don't lose your body weight, you may land up in complications like heart diseases, gallstones, diabetes, menstrual disorders, pregnancy complications, paralysis, cancer, stress incontinence of urine, many more diseases are invited only because of the obesity. Now let us know the benefits of reducing 10 kilos of body weight. If one reduces just 10 kilos of body weight, if a obese person, I am telling, not a normal person, so diabetic death and cancer death can be cut down to 40 percent, lipid profile is brought down to more than 15 to 30 percent, blood sugar also falls down, blood pressure also reduces by 20 millimeter mercury, systolic and diastolic. So there is a saying in uh, uh, Sanskrit, Parishramo Mitaharo Bhugatava Shvinusthav, how to reduce body weight? This shloka says, do parishrama, that is, do more physical activity. Do mitahara, that is, take only limited quantity of food. Then only you can lose body weight. So, taking low calorie of food yes. definitely will reduce your body weight. Okay. Ma'am, uh, apart from, you know, eating more and uh, burning less calories, what are the other causes of obesity? So coming to the other causes of obesity, it is quite interesting. So it deals more with the diseases, other pathological diseases and also our socio-behavioral patterns. Coming to the diseases in brain diseases also, due to the underlying brain diseases, one may attain obesity. And in PCOD, that is hormonal disorders also, and there will it will cause obesity. And also intake of some medicines like antidepressants, taking steroids or taking oral contraceptives may lead to obesity. And due to some hormonal imbalance like uh, hypothyroidism also, one may get obesity. This is, these are some diseases leading to obesity. Whereas I said about the behavioral causes like skipping breakfast followed by overeating in the next meal. So okay. what is the fun of skipping breakfast when you tend to overeat in the meal? So that is one more wrong behavior and one more is uh, like the taking more snacks in between two meals. And also there is loss of formalized regular meal pattern and watching TV, looking into your mobile and computers. Uh, all these practices will uh, uh, lose the uh, make you to lose the recognition of how much food you are eating and what you are eating. Uh, you mean it disturbs our cellular intelligence? Yes, sir, of course, because our brain has satiety and uh, feeding centers. So when you will be watching TV and uh, mobiles, yeah. you will not be conscious what is happening, yeah. uh, what you are doing. So that's why feeding center stops its yes. work. That's why you uh, tend to be obese by uh, by your own behaviors. And because of the hormonal surge in perimenopausal age also, there will be, uh, it will lead to the obesity. And we deviate from our normal and uh, formulated food habits because of affluence. India is the country where we can find malnourished diseases and overnourished diseases. So we have diversities in this also. So because of affluence leads to the obesity and we have more and more nuclear families nowadays. So because of this, the availability of the food is more among very few family members. Previously, it used to get shared by all the members who were in joint family. So this is also a cause for obesity and social gatherings, attending more and more social parties also leads to the obesity. So obesity, when we are treating obesity, we have to keep in mind all these causes and we have to bring some disciplines in food habits, lifestyles and preventive measures in obesity. Uh, correct, madam. Like, you know, uh, prevention is always better than cure. Uh, what modifications in lifestyle and food uh, needs to be done to prevent obesity? Let me take up the prevention in uh, modifying our food habits. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of food do you have to select in obesity? So, mainly uh, there is classification in nature, naturopathy like uh, sattva ahara, 
then sukta ahara and nisattva ahara so your diet should be more with sattva ahara or satvika ahara sattva ahara is ready to eat food that is made ready by the sun sun cooked food like fruits and vegetables sprouts milk and milk products buttermilk and fresh honey with lemon so all these are called as sattva yuta ahara they are highly balanced wholesome and contains all constituents of food and also so when you take up this sukta ahara category it is like you need to boil and cook these foods maybe whole cereals whole grains pulses etc but remember when you select select any cereal like maybe jowar wheat or rice it should be unpolished and of course nisattva ahara is the junk food we all know very well about it but still we cannot uh, stop eating them so one has to stop this junk food and coming to the quantity of the food what is the quantity of the food one should eat so maharshi charaka says in ayurveda so you have to make your stomach as four, four parts half part should be filled with solid food and remaining one fourth should be filled with liquid food liquid other than water water should be taken in moderate quantity while eating food and remaining one fourth of the stomach should be empty to facilitate digestion and this is a rule which stops you from overeating ever too much of drinking water when you are having your food maybe like 50 to 100 ml of water is sufficient if you have other liquid foods if you eat drink more uh, water what happens the abdomen descends down to the stomach descends down to the abdomen yeah. it becomes j shaped abdomen and it leads to abdomen obesity now what is the right time for you to eat you have to eat when you are hungry and you you have to eat very early in the Uh, night so before you go to the bed before 3 hours of your sleep you should finish your dinner and night food should be very scanty or very minimum in calorie it can be a cup of milk with some fruits and vegetables so you should feel very light in your stomach when you go to the bed so eat in time eat keep a regular stipulated time and eat when you are hungry now let us know what not to eat what we should not eat to prevent obesity so you have to avoid too hot and too cold refrigerated items and coffee and tea let you cut down the number of times you take coffee and tea and also you should cut down your sugar contents maida excess salt white rice because it is unpolished and it is lack of fiber you have to you should not eat white rice polished cereals curd you should avoid in the night deep fried items you have to avoid processed preserved and tinned food you have to avoid cheese you have to avoid red meat you have to avoid and what you have to use in moderation especially this calorie rich fruits like banana mango jackfruit and dry fruits and coming to the vegetable potato and tapioca this uh, this you this you should take very in very much moderation and coming to the pattern of eating how you must eat so there is a saying again Uh, drink the liquid uh, drink the solid eat the liquid that means you have to chew your food so 20% of the digestion should be over in your mouth then it should be passed to your stomach and you have to sit on the floor and eat when you cross your legs sit on the floor and eat there will be less blood circulation to your calf muscles and limbs and enhancing the blood circulation to the stomach digestion will improve and you don't tend to overeat because there is no place for the stomach to go down when you cross your legs so that is a very scientific position to have your food and you can even use more some food should be taken more and more in obesity that is amla lemon ashgar this is because they are very high in alkaline they reduce your appetite and they prevent gastritis and you can also take vegetables like bottle gourd you can take jowar and indian spices should be more in your food diet so for example coriander and jeera they are highly alkaline and they act, act as antioxidant and you can take red rice and barley and moong is the best dal you can go for instead of tuwar dal better to go for moong dal or moong sprouts and ragi also you can take ragi is the best food item you can include in your menu and jowa wheat there is a uh, variety of the wheat which is mentioned in ayurveda jowa godi in kannada or jowa wheat so that that is nothing but whole wheat atta 
So out of that, you can make pulkas and have it. So avoid coming to other modifications in your uh, in your food habits. And early morning, you should the first drink should be water. And afternoon, the best drink should be buttermilk. Night, it best drink is skimmed milk. So you have to remove the cream of the milk, and then you can have. So and take natural drinks like hot water, soups, and more and more herbal teas instead of coffee and tea. Fruit juices without sugar, tender coconut water, kokum juice, skimmed milk with turmeric, butter milk. Lemon honey juice, ganji, or gruel of variety of cereals and millets. These are all the preferable juices, soups which can be taken when you are undergoing diet regimen in obesity management. Now coming to the lifestyle modifications in obesity. So one has to stop watching TVs, looking into the mobile, and one has to follow a regular meal timings. If you are skipping lunch. Take something during that period. You may you may not take rice or chapati, but you can go for boiled vegetables and fruits and butter milk. So something you have to take which is less in calorie in that meal time. So you should not totally abandon food. And also you have to do you have to take two liters of water daily. When you include include some liquids, it can come up to three liters. And you have to follow one hour, thirty minutes to one hour exercises daily, depending on the body strength of a person. You may be get exhaustion, exhausted after thirty minutes of exercise. So slowly they can increase their exercise timings. And one day fasting, once in fifteen days can be followed. And not sleeping in the daytime. This is very very important. So people have the habit habit of taking uh, going for a short nap in the afternoon hours. So after intake of the food, they should not sleep for uh, more than thirty minutes, twenty to thirty minutes. Daytime sleep should be avoided in obesity, and uh, you, you should make it a habit to get up very early in the morning in Brahmi Mohurtam because there is a high level of energy in the atmosphere in the morning hours. So you can your body takes more and more oxygen in the morning hours if you do exercises, and it helps in burning the calories. Apart from these modifications, one should undergo therapies in naturopathy to prevent uh, and uh, to manage obesity. Uh, Ma'am, uh, what are the therapies that are available in naturopathy for the management of obesity? So, like I told you in the beginning of my speech, we use panchamaha bhutas as treatment modalities. So, we use mat therapy, we use hydrotherapy. Let us go for hydrotherapy first. So, in hyd hydrotherapy means Treating the body with the water, so we have specially designed tubs in the naturopathy to give immersion or to give water bath to different parts of the body. If a bath is given to the middle part of the body, your abdomen, hips, and thighs, it is called as hip bath. If you immerse yourself in a full immersion tub up till your neck, it is called as warm full immersion bath. If you keep your legs in a bucket of hot water. It is called as hot foot bath. So these different varieties of uh, tub baths, hydrotherapy treatments, act in a different way. They definitely they will help you to uh, reduce the body fat. Uh, in hip bath, uh, during uh, fasting we give hip bath, and also in abdominal obesity we give hip bath to reduce the appetite. And reduce the hunger. There will be fat mobilization by relieving inner congestion. And remember, whenever we are giving the hydrotherapy treatments, it is the skin. It acts as a media. It conveys the temperature sense to the inner organs. There will be drawing of the inner congested blood to the periphery, and that's how the fat mobilization it gets initiated by hydrotherapy treatments. Coming to the hot foot bath. In hot foot bath, there is a saying in Hindi, sir. It's very interesting. Pound, pound garam, pet naram, sir kanda to maidiko maro danda. So it means to say that your feet should be always uh, more hot, and legs, uh, le pet that is stomach should be very light, right. but head should be very cool. So, but because of today's lifestyle, our feet is cool. There is no blood circulation to our feet because we don't walk exercise. Our head is hot. It is reverse. 
the head is hot because of the stress and our plate that stomach is not light it is because of overeating it is heavy so it has we have gone to the other extreme so to rectify this hot food bath is very helpful where you will be keeping your both legs in the hot water and a cold towel is kept on your head but remember all this hydrotherapy treatments are given in the empty stomach because we will we will be uh, putting more and more effects on the extensive circulatory apparatus of our body yeah. so that's why we need to give this treatment in the empty stomach and we also have mud therapy in uh, naturopathy mud has got a unique uh, feature of absorbing toxins whatever you throw into the earth it gets yeah. absorbed except bio non biodegradable items yeah. so we need to give this mud therapy to absorb the toxins from the body and to eliminate them i mean to say when i say toxins i mean to say the excess fat also considered as toxins in naturopathy and when you apply mud on your abdomen the sagging of the muscle vanishes so there will be more and more elasticity uh, appears in your abdomen muscles and th there will be a reduction in the abdominal girth and we also give hot treatments in hydrotherapy it improves peripheral circulation it increases sweating it also mobilizes the fat by burning more energy so when you give hot treatments there will be more and more sweating so you will be burning the calorie when you take this hot treatments uh, and we under air element we give massage therapy massage is a passive exercise given to the body to your body from other person when you when you take up massage there will be exercise to the muscles and breaking of the complex toxins into the simpler form fat is mobilized and energy is ex energy gets expenditure and coming to the last intervention called as fasting and diet regimen in naturopathy so here because of the fasting energy consumption reduces and at the same energy so you will be you will not there will not be any work to your git because of the juice fasting so you are giving ready juices to the stomach so there will be uh, the same energy is diverted towards the repair processes in fasting and the, there will be repair and rearrangements of the fat metabolism occurs inside our body so obesity can be managed like this by all these naturopathy modalities and one more is the enema so we give enema warm water enema to the persons for detoxification simple and it simplifies and eliminates fat from the body so all these are few treatments which help us to manage obesity okay. so when we take up this obesity as a task so we keep a target whenever a person comes to our hospital or comes to a doctor so first we we have to diagnose we have to evaluate the body mass index then we have to depending on which category he comes whether he is overweight or obese or whether he is having morbid obesity so we keep a target plan and it is done to reduce the weight so treatment is designed for 10 to 15 days based on the need of the person okay and conduct we in our hospital we conduct camps thrice in a year mass obesity camps are conducted where people can plan and avail this benefit according to their convenience and we here in our camps we blend yoga naturopathy and ayurveda treatments along with the diet regimen so people uh, can definitely make use of these facilities to uh, combat obesity and at this days of covid 19 Uh, many cases are around so to have a continued health services we take utmost care through preventive measures in our hospital so our here dr krishna prasad he is our hicc chairman will further explain regarding our preventive measures taken in our hospital yes. sir please explain to our viewers yeah. regarding the preventive measures uh, our jcs i with the hospital being a government recognized ayurveda hospital and a cghs m panel one and moreover it's a nabh accredited hospital so 24 into 7 we follow the hospital infection controlling measures and at this point of time we have a, a specialized uh, covid-19 screening which is done uh, to everybody on every day I mean to all those who enter our hospital and right from the employees 
health workers, you know, the patients and attenders. So we do a thermal check and uh, we have uh, provided uh, personal protection equipments and hand sanitizers and we also do dhupana, there is a fumigation uh, as per our classical Ayurveda text and uh, sterilization techniques we follow to ensure and provide an infection free environment in our hospital. And uh, we do give uh, kashayams, that is uh, decoctions, uh, uh, the herbal decoctions uh, as a prophylactic uh, measures at our hospital. So, you know, uh, thank you madam for all the uh, invaluable information that you have given so far. And before we conclude, uh, we have some questions from our viewers. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Let us and go for some questions. Yeah, yeah, like madam. Uh, then, madam, like this obese patients uh, with thyroid dysfunctions. Okay. Okay. Uh, they say uh, it is much difficult to uh, lose weight. So, uh, what do you say about this uh, view? To some extent, it, it is right. Yeah. So, because of the hypothyroidism, uh, hormonal imbalance, they need to struggle more to shed their few kilos of body weight. This is because of the underlying disease. So, we need to treat. Uh, first hypothyroidism mm -hmm. they have to con if they are already containing medicines we should not stop it we have to tell them to continue medicines so along with that we are not only we are in our obesity intervention we are not only advising them to undergo diet and exercises we have panchamaha bhuta treatments okay. with which definitely we can increase the body metabolic rate mm -hmm. and thereby we can help them to do more and more energy expenditure and lose their body weight like uh, madam, there is another question. Uh, does the meditation you know, uh, boost the immunity? That's what I was saying. Yeah. Meditation is the food for your soul. Yeah. So your soul is the miniature of the macrocosmos. Okay. So we have many more hidden potentialities in our soul. So we are not using all the power inside our soul. Whenever you do some contemplation and meditation, your body cells goes back to the homeostasis. So homeostasis is a condition where all the functioning of the organs or all the tissues, all the cells will attain the peak of health. So because of this, definitely meditation helps in boosting the immunity. Okay. Like uh, there is another question. You know, uh, after completing uh, anti-obesity treatments uh, yeah, and once they are out of these uh, diet regimens, uh, people are afraid that uh, you know uh, uh, they gain weight again and uh, what do you say about this uh, uh, belief see we have two varieties of diet like when they get into the hospital when they are undergoing obesity management we have weight loss diets okay. so low calorie diets more juices more fruits and all but once they are out of this premises we uh, and once they reach their target of course so, uh, for example, they have lost 10 to 15 kilos of body weight. Now they have to, they have, they are prescribed with a different diet, which is called as weight maintenance diet. Okay. If they follow that weight maintenance diet, definitely they, there will not be regaining of the lost body weight. Okay. And there is another question, like, you know, uh, what are the spices, you know, which are the spicy foods to okay. be controlled uh, in our diet? Uh, especially green chilies and red chilies. Yeah. This is a good question. So our Indian systems of medicine, whether Ayurveda or naturopaths, they tell you to go for pepper and ginger rather than green chilies and red chilies. Yeah. So it is, and you can also uh, in, enhance like taking coriander, yeah. adding jeera and methi seeds. All these are Indian spices you can use instead of taking red chilies and green chilies. Uh, there is another question, madam. Like, uh, uh, I mean, especially there are questions on the side effects of the weight loss. And uh, is it true that you know, or does it have any side effects of losing weight? Yes. Uh, uh, to to be frank, if you search in Google and go for a uh, neck prescribed diet, it is highly unscientific. Definitely, there will be side effects like uh, hair fall or uh, wrinkles in the skin, etc., or loss of energy, feeling very fatigued, etc. But uh, when obesity is uh, managed under the medical supervision, yeah. when you are following a diet chart exclusively designed for your personal, highly personalized, yeah. 
from a doctor mm-hmm. and then that time if you lose weight definitely it will not have any side effects yeah correct uh, there is another question uh, which uh, which includes the aspect of ayurveda here uh, how does an ayurveda diet is different from the uh, normal diet so that's what i was telling in my speech what what all we suggest in ayurveda diet like taking a high fiber fiber rich diet correct wholesome grains and cereals yeah. taking the millets and avoiding unpolished rice and taking meal in time mm-hmm. avoiding late night dinner and avoiding junk food all these are nothing but ayurveda diet that is called as we also have dinacharya and rutucharya i called seasonal regimen and daily regimen which i have told in the preventive measures to manage obesity so the same thing is applicable as answer to this question okay madam uh, um, thank you uh, for all the valuable informations that you have given on this platform hope uh, this will be a very much useful for, for our viewers and once again i thank you so much thank you very much sir and i render my sincere thanks to jss mahavidya peta and forum center city for giving platform to share my views my sincere thanks to our director or mahesh for the support my whole hearted thanks to our medical superintendent of jss ayurveda hospital dr rajesh udupudi my heartfelt thanks to dr krishna prasad uh, who who is here as a moderator and my sincere thanks to smart nandita shenai she is the administrative officer of jss ayurveda hospital and i thank all my technical staffs faculties friends for this support thank you one and all namaste